Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 1st. I would like to thank 1954 Shadow and Glover International for a lot of this week's links. And as usual, all the links to all the articles I talk about will be in the description down below. I talked a few weeks ago about China's Jade Rabbit, that's the lunar explorer that they successfully soft landed on the moon. Well, the latest update I could get was around January 28th when it's going into its second hibernation shutdown and there was some type of a technical difficulty with the mechanical system. There's been no further word other than they kind of worded this strangely as if it was the Jade Rabbit craft itself talking to people back to Earth um, saying that if it did not survive the or was not able to get into the hibernation shutdown that it may be saying goodbye forever. Um, it's just um, I don't know, maybe maybe it's poetic or something like that, but um, it's survived half of its mission, but as usual when you do have craft that are on other planets that have uh, long periods of severe cold, you have to basically turn all the instruments off that you possibly can and put it into a, a mode where it just protects itself and you use all your extra energy just to keep it warm enough to survive and not kill anything. And um, still no news. I've tried to look for anything recent, but it's got like a two-week period of time before it's going to um, try to be awakened again, I guess, to, to do more of its mission work and stuff like that. The uh, lander craft along with it, though, is still doing okay and probably will go into successful hibernation. So I don't know what they've got set up for that craft to do, but the Explorer itself may or may not make it through the night. Um, or may not make it through, you know, the, the two week long night, that's the thing too, it's not just one night, it's two weeks long in the moon that it's going to be in darkness and the temperature's going to plunge pretty, pretty gosh darn low. Let's see if it gives what the exact temperature is here. They did have it here somewhere in the article and I lost it. Minus, uh, ah. Anyway, if you get a chance, read the article. The title of the article is China's Imperil Jade Rabbit Moon Rover, Good Night Humanity. And this is from CNN. Next up, this is a four-winged robot. They call it a jellyfish. I've got the video to this, too, that you can take a look at a little bit of it. And it's just kind of a different way to have a hovering flying craft. And one of the neat things about this is uh, it uh, may be able to be used for scientific experiments and stuff like that because in, in small sizes, if they can get this, this, this model itself is tethered, but if they can get this to be able to carry a battery, they claim that this thing can be uh, sent in fleets of a, a bunch of little tiny ones, and if it bumps into something, it won't really hurt it or damage the craft. So it can fly around and not have to necessarily um, you know, avoid obstacles and stuff like that. Might be able to use it in scientific research and things like that. This is, let's see... I'll read a little bit over here. The prototype consists of a carbon fiber frame surrounded by two pairs of thin plastic wings that open and close when driven by a motor. Its shape allows it to fly upright with little effort without requiring sensors or intelligence to adjust its wings like those used by insects. So basically it's uh, saving money by making it um, a dumb machine basically. You just, I guess, point it towards a certain area or put it on the drifting winds or whatever. You can use it for a scientific experiments that way. This is from New Scientist. And next up, our space program. It's uh, moving along rather slow. This uh, from BBC. Dream Chaser mini shuttle gives 2016 launch date. It's not even the beginning of 2016. It's more like November of 2016. So we're still kind of looking at about three years in the future before we're going to be launching our own astronauts in outer space. Right now it costs us about $60 million a pop because we're paying the Russians to send our astronauts up. So we're basically uh, paying for a taxi service, and that's rather expensive. I'll show you the picture here. This thing is uh, quite small compared to the shuttle that we retired. However, you got to think about the fact, too, that the shuttle we retired was basically a huge cargo craft. So this smaller shuttle, that um, the Dream Chaser, is still going to be able to bring seven astronauts up into outer space easily. Um, so they've basically just eliminated the huge cargo area. Um, I don't know if that's really going to hurt us not having a heavy lift capability anymore since the International Space Station is pretty much done. Um, so maybe there is really no need for a cargo craft anymore. Um, they also have two other projects in the works that the United States may invest into. They say at least probably one of the other two, which is a, a typical just a, a capsule type of launch. Uh, one of them Boeing is working on, and I think the other one is SpaceX. Um, that, that gives me the 
idea too of why is it taking another three years to do because if two other firms are working on a capsule type of system which we certainly are familiar with going all the way back to uh, Mercury, Gemini and Apollo um, why is the development so long about that? Why couldn't we get one of these other capsule systems up and running? I can I can maybe halfway understand with developing a whole new smaller space shuttle you certainly want safety considerations and lots of tests done. you don't want to hurt or kill any of the astronauts so but um, capsule systems seems to me like we've uh, we've done that enough before that um, I don't really know the idea behind why we're waiting so long with that. And next up, this is um, this is another about the quadcopter, the the Phantom quadcopter that I've talked about before, the DJI Phantom. They've come up with an upgraded model. I guess this runs about four thousand dollars for this upgraded model, but. Um, a lot of stuff in it that people, they, they call it, I think, like it, the Cinema Ultimate Cinema Edition. So it's for, made specifically for cinematographers, and they've upgraded the control system, upgraded a lot of the other stuff on it. Um, and like everything else, hopefully the cost will come down. But um, I just wanted to get, you know, uh, present this article, too, because of the fact that us as uh, moto vloggers, and even if you're just a regular standard vlogger, having a craft that can do helicopter type of shots is always something good and especially one to where they're um, not just making it something that you can fly a camera around with but something basically geared towards us as vloggers. Uh, you, if you're a moto vlogger like me you know the original cameras were stuff that we had to kind of cobble together ourselves from just regular old standard cameras and now you can actually get on the market cameras built specifically for us as moto vloggers. Well, looks like they're moving that way really quickly with this G DJI Phantom to actually make it to where people that are using a quadcopter just specifically for filmmaking have an addition specifically made for us. It uses a Futaba controller, which I'm familiar with because I used to do a little bit of uh, remote controlled radio flying of um, small airplanes. So um, seems to be good quality stuff. And, uh, you know, not a bad price to start with. It'll come down like everything else. And last up, this is uh, more about the 3D printers. This is a carbon fiber printer. Right now it's not available, but they're taking pre-orders around $5,000 it's going to cost. Um, not really sure how popular it will be. It may be more like for just specific applications. I can't see really for, for building huge parts um, that have fiber, carbon fiber coating and stuff like that, how this would be really that practical because it tends to just use a nozzle and and lay down little individuals. So maybe for small piece production, maybe for test production, stuff like that. They, they uh, in the article it seems to read to me that they, you can actually build pieces bigger than the uh, device itself, which is about maybe a foot long and maybe a foot and a half wide, something like that. So I guess what you can do is you can just keep printing the part and let it come out of the machine itself. But uh, yeah, now they've got actually 3D carbon fiber printers. Oh, and one thing too, um, I found out just recently in an article on a news update, the uh, one of the patents is expiring for a type of 3D printing called laser centering. Uh, that's not centering as in C-E-N-T-E-R, as in it's in centering as in S-I-N-T-E-R. In other words, the laser blasts a little particle of material into a, a powder form or an aerosol form, and then you spray it on the surface that way with a nozzle. So you can. Um, the one problem with 3D printers in a lot of cases is you can't easily and inexpensively build car parts with critical dimensions. You, you're going to be plus or minus, you know, some pretty wide tolerances there compared to um, a lot of stuff that does require precision. Well, using a laser centering pro process, you can like, like lay down layers of stuff that are maybe just a few molecules thick. So you can make some pretty precision parts that way. And with that patent uh, expiring, and that gives a chance for a lot more inexpensive printers to be built and not have to worry about, you know, paying a, a licensing fee or something like that. So, we've got some good possibilities in the future for the 3D printers really uh, catching on and becoming a decent price. So anyway, I hope everybody has a really good Super Bowl weekend if you uh, enjoy the sport. If not, um, whatever you do enjoy for the weekend. Um, last up, as I go out, a friend of mine, Sarah Kellett, put up a group called the Dumpster Divers group on Facebook. So if you're interested and you follow the Dumpster Divers and you would like to participate through Facebook, that would be a great place to post ideas um, for topics and things like that or just discuss the show. Um, anything you want. It's uh, a group really that's flexible enough. Uh, make the group what you want. If it uh, makes it, I'd really like to see it be a part of the Dumpster Divers. Um, typically about 80% of the groups on Facebook, they uh, stay around for a few weeks and then they just 
go into a death spiral. I hope it's not that way with this, but if there's enough interest, I would really like to see it going. So here's the video from Sarah Kellett talking about it. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to let you guys know that if you're a fan of the Dumpster Divers, please join us on Facebook uh, today. And if you haven't heard about Dumpster Divers, well, just to let you know, it's news that you typically don't hear about. Especially, you know, if, especially if you're in America from CNN, Fox News, ABC, CBS, all that stuff. It's news you don't typically hear. And I encourage you all to join today uh, in liking our page and enjoying the fun that we have. It's great information that we tell everyone. Until next time, peace. And that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.